Hello everyone, thank you very much for joining and I just want to say thank you for your support, your subscription and the likes you gave for the video and we're continuing with the deep reinforcement learning with part two and in the previous video we defined the reinforcement learning problem and in this one we're going to introduce the first uh, algorithm we're going to use to solve that reinforcement learning problem and the algorithm is DQN which is also DQ network and uh, this actually became really famous with the DeepMind paper where they showed uh, they can use DQN to play Atari games at superhuman level. So um, without any further ado, let's get started. Um, so first of all, I wanted to recap the reinforcement learning problem. So this slide is showing uh, nothing you've not seen before. This was actually covered in the previous slide, so don't be afraid. So first of all, um, like, like, pre like we said previously that uh, we want our agent to learn a policy such that it can select actions with the highest reward. Uh, so there's two ways we can learn this policy function. One is to directly infer the policy or we can indirectly infer policy. And uh, the method of uh, directly inferring policy is a lot more difficult to do as opposed to the indirect method where we can simply take the maximum of the expected return for a given policy performed for a particular state. Uh, and the way we do that is simply taking the max value of our value function for that given policy. And that gives us our optimal policy as defined by this equation. Now here V, which is the value function, is basically known as a state value function, which is uh, which gives us the expected return for uh, starting at some particular state S and then always following some policy pi. So this actually expects, uh, th this function uh, requires uh, that we follow some policy uh, that we already have. But the problem in our scenario is we don't actually have a policy because our neural network hasn't learned anything. Initial functions that the neural net will take uh, will essentially be random. So. Uh, we actually need a different value function that accommodates our needs. So uh, we introduce what is known as a Q value function or also known as the action uh, value function. And um, what it takes in is the state action pair. And it is it basically defines the expected return starting at some state S, but then taking an arbitrary action A. And this action A does not necessarily have to come from a policy since it's arbitrary, so it can be random. But there on after, we have to act according to some policy. So initially our network will take random actions, but after it has actually racked up some experiences and we learn from those experiences, we actually have some policy. Even though that policy will be weak, we have something. So um, the Q value function or action value function is what we use in the DQN. And um, this essentially can be substituted for the state value function in the same way. So optimal value function, I mean, optimal policy function, sorry, is simply just the maximum of the optimal action value function, similar to um, optimal policy function being the maximum of the state value function. Um, what we also know is that these value functions, uh, both state value function and action value function, but for now let's just focus on the action value function since that is what we actively use, uh, follows the uh, Bellman rule. It, it obeys uh, the Bellman rule. Now, <laughs> Uh, proving that mathematically is a whole different uh, different problem and I think we're going to stay clear from that otherwise this will take a while but just uh, just uh, I just want you to basically accept the fact that the value function obeys the Bellman rule which is a recursive rule that uh, states that the value of a current state is um, uh, is the reward we get for that particular state, as well as the expected reward for the successor state. So the expected reward for the next state. So if we actually look at the Bellman equivalent of our action value function, then it is exactly as we said. So the optimal Q value or the optimal value uh, for our current state, uh, given some action, is the reward we get for that particular time step, for that particular state, plus the expected uh, value or expected return we get for the next state and the possible action we will take. Um, so that is 
That is essentially the Bellman equation. And basic idea in reinforcement learning is to estimate this optimal Q value by using this Bellman as an iterative update. And that's what the value iteration algorithm does. So the value iteration algorithm simply, uh, given, given our uh, experiences which we have stored, uh, let's say you have a sequence of transitions, right? State, uh, state, action, reward, state, action, reward, next state, action, reward, next state, action, reward, so on. So we have this sequence of state, next state, state, next state, or state, then next state, next state, next state, etc. And the sequence um, uh, for each of uh, the current state, we can expect, uh, we can calculate the expected reward for the next state and therefore uh, select the maximum uh, Q value for a given action. Uh, and therefore we can predict what the next action should be. But the problem with this uh, iteration, this iterative algorithm is that it's actually quite impractical because uh, the Q value from the Bellman update has to be uh, computed separately for each uh, sequence of our experience for each sequence. So when we actually reinitialize the environment, we have to calculate it all over again. So if we were to deploy this in the real world, we would have to have this huge history of sequences from which we would calculate our Bellman, uh, uh, Bellman uh, expected reward. And then based on that, we would select the optimal policy. Now that is A, inefficient, and B, as I said, impractical. So what if we could just learn a function that is able to perform similar to the Bellman, uh, uh, Bellman equation? So instead of iteratively doing this, what if we just learn the underlying function that can map our input uh, by learning some features that can give us the output Q value, which is similar to the optimal Q value we get from our Bellman output. Uh, in which case this becomes a regression problem. So if this is a regression problem, the way we would formulate is, is that the Bellman is our target Q value. That is the Q value a level we want to obtain. And the output of our model, which is the Q network, hence the DQN, because we use a deep learning to model that Q network. Uh, the, the output of our network is the predicted Q value for all the possible actions. And we want the output of the network, the Q value, to be almost same as the target Q value, which we would have got from our Bellman equation. So the so how can we adjust our weights in our neural network such that the predicted Q value always appears as a Q target value? So you must have seen this when we do linear regression or actually just looking at MNIST classification, right? We could just calculate the distance um, that our output prediction is from our target value, and then we can just backpropagate that weights using multivariate chain rule, um, which is essentially what backpropagation is. So we can simply calculate our loss as our mean square error, which is a Euclidean distance between the target Q value, which is like, as I said before, obtained by our Bellman, and the Q predicted, which is from our network. And we then backpropagate this loss uh, to update our Q network. So if we were to look at an actual scenario, let's say we have an Atari games, and let's say the total number of actions we can take are four different actions. I mean, um, I couldn't find the particular screen for an Atari game with four different actions, but let's just say this uh, screen is from an Atari game, which we will use as an input, and we will put that in our convolutional neural network, which has three convolutional layers, and then we flatten the output of these layers and then pass it through a fully connected. And the last layer, is essentially each node is associated with the action and it will output the Q value for that action. So we have four different actions we can possibly take in this environment, hence four different nodes, and the output is a Q value associated for each action. And we select our optimal action as the um, as the maximum of these Q values. So whichever action node has the highest Q value, we basically use that as our optimal action, as our input to the environment. So if we were to go back to our loss function that we define here, we have our Q predicted value um, here. So let's say we selected action one. So our Q value for that is um, QA1. And then we say, uh, okay, so our Q target for that particular action is uh, computed by the Bellman, simply do the mean square error and that's the loss we 
back propagate uh, through the network. And then we update the whole network iteratively. And what we will see is eventually, given enough experiences that we train the neural network with, that the neural network will output um, Q values associated with all actions given that state. Uh, so it is essentially learned the pattern of what the possible Q values should be for the experiences that it has uh, gone through uh, for all the given actions. And it will, and then if we always select the maximum Q value, it will always be the right action to select. So it's a very intelligent way to indirectly propose, indirectly uh, infer what the policy should be here. Um, so if we actually uh, look at the DQN algorithm, which was stated in the paper, this should make more sense now. So we initialize our uh, memory, which is our replay, experience replay memory. So this is where we store our transitions in our experiences. Uh, and the capacity N is basically up to the user. Um, I think uh, sometimes people go with 10,000 or less, up to you. And we initialize our Q network with random weights, or you can initialize it with uh, other weight initializers like Xavier or Kyming, uh, et cetera. And we initialize our environment, um, and we attain our first state by uh, initializing our environment. And then we select our action. Um, so initially, these would literally be random actions, but we can actually select them. Uh, from our network, which will be our policy as we learn iteratively. And that will be the maximum of our Q output value we get from our network. And that will be the action we select. We simply then implement the action into the environment to get our reward and our next state. And then we store that uh, state, action, reward, next state into our transition uh, replay memory D. And then we basically uh, calculate the Bowman uh, error for, well, not the error, sorry, the Bellman uh, equivalent, the Q value, uh, Bellman Q value uh, for our uh, uh, state, for the current state, because uh, we already have our next state. Uh, so we calculate uh, the Bellman uh, Q value, and that becomes our target Q value, which we want to reach. And then we perform gradient descent because we want to minimize the mean square error. Yeah, so we minimize the mean square error by taking uh, the gradient step um, down the loss function uh, by the formula that was depicted in the previous uh, slides. And we keep doing this iteratively till basically we've reached the uh, global minimum of our loss function. And at that point, our network will always output the right Q values for our given actions. And that is really it. So essentially what we do is we boil this um, reinforcement learning problem into a simple regression problem by approximating uh, a function, uh, by actually defining a function that approximates the Q value for the given actions. So that's really it. That's all DQN is. It's, uh, it's basically taking the reinforcement learning uh, algorithm and putting it as a regression problem to uh, predict the right Q value, and then we simply select uh, our actions as the maximum Q value, which is our uh, action associated with the maximum possible reward it can attain for that particular state. Um, and that's the DQN algorithm. If it's still a bit uh, difficult to understand, uh, I think after, I, after you go through the code, which I will upload and the link would be provided in the description below, and I will also, I'll give you um, a day or two to basically go through the code see if you can understand it yourself. And then I'll actually upload another video where I actually go through the code almost line by line to explain how it works and why we have done certain things. Because in addition to the simple algorithm that is mentioned in the paper, there's actually a bunch of additional hacks you have to <laughs> implement in order for reinforcement learning algorithm to actually converge. Uh, you also realize when you actually run it that uh, DQN is a very it's very unstable, not noisy, sorry. It's very unstable, and it takes a while before it reaches convergence. Um, thank you very much for listening. Uh, stay tuned for the next code uh, video, and then we will move on to the next algorithm there on. But honestly, DQN is sim just, as, uh, just as simple as defined. Um, but yeah, awesome. Thank you very much. Take care. See you in the next one. I almost forgot. Um, please do subscribe if you love the video, and of course, like it if you like the video. And please do share it so more people get access to this. And leave your comments in uh, in the comment section below if you have any particular questions. Or if I miss something, just add it at the bottom uh, so that other people can uh, be aware of that too. Thank you very much for listening. Take care and see you in the next one. Bye.